McDonald is one of the so-called right-wing provocateurs. Professor Hanlon says can be silenced. Earlier this month, she tried to speak at Claremont College about how widespread anti-police rhetoric is in America and how it's making this country less safe. Instead of being allowed to speak, this happened. Heather McDonald joins us tonight. Heather, thanks a lot for coming on. So you, I uh, hope, just heard thanks, what Professor you. Hanlon from Colby College just said, which is that some people's views just aren't worth hearing, and colleges have a right to squelch those views. What do you think of that? The historical amnesia is absolutely shocking, and to hear this from a faculty member's mouth is, is very scary. We're at risk of really losing America very quickly, Tucker, if this continues. This idea of, oh, we're just judging the quality of the speaker is right. a completely ex post facto justification. This is pure vic viewpoint discrimination. And what we're seeing, Tucker, is the confluence of two very dangerous trends in America today, which is the emasculation of the police in the Black Lives Matter era, so that you cannot count on the police to keep order, and then the spread of victimology ideology. The reason speakers like myself and Ann Coulter are being turned down and shouted down and silenced is because of this preposterous idea that to be a minority student or a female on a college campus today is quite literally to be at risk of your existence. This is a complete delusion, but these students that are trying to silence speakers are doing it in the name of their own literal existence and safety. And this keeps going on and on and well, on, and exactly. it has to be stopped. Well, exactly. I mean, I thank you for saying that, because what you have here are people who are conflating opinions with violence. They're saying, you shouldn't be allowed to speak because your words are the same as an act of violence. And then they're committing violence to prevent you from expressing your views. Does anybody acknowledge this irony? I mean, this is actually insane. No. The ironies are so multiple. The fact that these people have the gall to go under the moniker of anti-fascist is mind-blowing. I don't know. I don't want to engage in the same hyperbole as the left, but I don't know what to call this behavior if not fascist. Either. They're not only silencing speakers, but they are exercising brute force over their fellow students to decide what they're allowed to hear. There should be an uprising of students, but more importantly, there should be an uprising of faculty because we have conferred on them the extraordinary privilege of tenure to protect their own freedom of speech and thought. And yet when these mobs break out, the faculty are nowhere to be found. They should be out there locking we are going to protect freedom of speech here because we are the vanguard. Well, this system is so corrupt that you kind of fear maybe it can't be fixed. But I just have a really simple question for you. Where's the sensible left that used to defend freedom of speech? I never agreed with their views or who they voted for, but they used to stand up and say, you have a right to say what you think. Where are they now mm -hmm. in what is clearly a moment of crisis for freedom of speech in America? Where are they? They're cowering under the thrall of identity politics. It is impossible to overstate how much the university mission has been distorted and destroyed by this absurd idea of victimization and the elevation of identity above all else. And yes. the faculty that oppose this are terrified to speak out because they'll be called racist, sexist, misogynist, homophobic, you name it. This is how it ends. This is how it falls apart. When they take away your freedom of speech, you have no freedom. Heather, thanks for joining us tonight. It's upsetting, but I'm Thank glad you, uh, you're here to explain it.